Hello, it is Monday, December 13th, 2021. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to my New York Times crossword, Daily Solve. This episode of The Daily Solve is brought to you by Jeff and Sinead Vidlaki, Gabe Chinkapalmi, and, as always, the inestimable Hood Monster. I'm going to try out doing those acknowledgments right up front rather than at the end, because I realized a lot of people don't watch to the end, which is perfectly fine. Uh, but I want to make sure I thank the people who have generously uh, donated to the Patreon campaign to keep this thing sustainable. It should only take a few seconds, so it shouldn't be a big imposition on your time, but I'll try that out, see how it goes. If you'd like to join their ranks, you can do so at the Patreon campaign, patreon.com slash daily solve. But also, a lot of bonus video solves up on there. And actually, I just put up the monthly bonus video uh, from the New York Times on the Patreon feed just last night. That was the Christmas cheer uh, crossword. Quite a lot of cheer-related clues and answers in that puzzle. Anyway, today's Times crossword is the Monday puzzle, so should be a nice, gentle way to ease into the solving week. And uh, it was constructed by Thomas Spears. I didn't, don't think I recognize that name. But before we get on to the puzzle itself, let's look at a few clues from yesterday's crossword. Um, the F and Crow explains that just to provide some sports context, a base coach in baseball is strange, but not just a name for coaches in baseball. In baseball, there are two coaches positioned at first base and third base and are often called the first base coach and third base coach. The position is sometimes just boiled down to base coach as the answer. They have a few jobs, but the job you'd most likely recognize is they're the relay point for those ridiculous hand signals from the dugout to the batter. And Ronald Bryan explains that Dan Connor is the father from Roseanne and the Connors, and Danny Tanner is the father in Full House and Fuller House. Those were the two names clued uh, that resolved to the answer, TV dads. He said both television shows from the late 80s to mid-90s, which then had recent sequels. Dan Connor, played by John Goodman, and Danny Tanner by Bob Saget. So I remember those shows, but I didn't remember the names of the characters, I guess. Kathy Swope says Oviedo is a city in both Spain and Florida, and the axil, A-X-I-L, is the upper angle between a leaf stalk or branch and the stem or the trunk from which it's growing. A famili familiar term if you're a gardener, perhaps, derived from the Latin axilla for armpit. Maybe that's what I was thinking of when I thought of axilla. And finally, Lindsay Schultz explains the way I always remember accent grave versus accent aigu, which are the two diagonal accent marks that can go over certain letters, is that accent grave points down into the right. So it's pointing down to the ground or to the grave. That's very good. And by Stibley says, we got taught that you, if you label a, and then sort of the carrot, the circumflex, the one that's a little, looks like a little mountain peak, the diacritics are in alphabetical order. A goo is the left slope, circumflex on the peak, and grave on the right, or grave on the right. That's clever. All right. So there we have a few bits of context from yesterday's puzzle. And um, anything else to mention? I guess I'll remind you of the new Twitter account, at The Daily Solve. I already mentioned the Patreon. And then finally, there's the Daily Solve Discord chat server, where you can spend time with others who watch this series and uh, chat about crosswords or other puzzles and crossword construction. And you can find that in a link in the description field underneath the video where you can find links to those other things as well. All right, let's 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 solve the Monday puzzle. This is a crossword constructed by Thomas Spears or Spires and edited, as always, by Will Shorts. And it will have a theme. It's a Monday puzzle. It will have some sort of theme, but probably not an overly ambitious one. Keep it simple for Monday. So it flows out as the tide. That could be ebbs. The tide ebbs and flows. It ebbs. And let's check the crosses on that. Elves have big ones, stereotypically. I guess ears. Elves have, have big ears, stereotypically. And a musical rhythm would be a beat. The Star of Room and Captain Marvel. Um, I've not seen either of these, but I think Brie... Oops, nope. Brie Larson... Hope it's O-N, not E-N. I'm not sure. Let's maybe remove that just so I don't lead myself astray. To do a crossword, say, well, could be hopefully to solve is to do a crossword, I would think. And the say just means that 
These things aren't synonyms. Doing a crossword, if you said, uh, I will solve that, it doesn't automatically mean doing a crossword specifically. It's just an example of that thing. So doing a crossword, say. And Grand Central, for one, is a railway station or railway terminal. There we go. Grand Central Station and Grand Central Terminal, technically two different uh, two different points. I mean, they're, they're uh, located, they're co-located, but Grand Central Terminal is for the trains and Grand Central Station is for the subway because in the case of the trains, it is a terminus. It is the end point of those trains, those, those lines. Um, all right, here we have Host Harvey of Family Feud, Steve Harvey, clearly, um, and printing paper units. Oh, you know what? It's not railway terminal. Maybe it's railroad station. All right, there we go. Fair enough. Well, the thing I said is still true, but <laughs> but um, but in this case, we're doing railroad station. I guess railway is more common here in the UK, so perhaps I was predisposed to that language. Uh, a money manager in brief. Money manager in brief. That's funny because I would have thought CPA, certified public accountant or something like that, which would have fit with railway. But let's keep looking. To wander about could be to roam. A right-hand person, right person at your right hand, your trusted aide, for instance, could work there. And your closest pal, so pal indicates, pal being a sort of slang word, indicates that the answer will be a bit slang tinged as well. And bestie, best friend, bestie. One who's always complaining, complaining, complaining. Could be a crab, someone who's very crabby. And here we have blank gras, goose or duck delicacy, foie gras. And then money manager in brief, oh, is CFO, of course, chief financial officer. Don't know why that didn't come to mind. And a music genre often labeled heavy, could be metal, heavy metal music. And what you may use when turning down an invitation. Well, hopefully tact, I suppose, do it tactfully. And an actor and a musician whose name sounds like a drink, ice, iced tea. I wonder where that I wonder where that name came from. All right. Cockney vis-a-vis -vis English. So Cockney is a dialect of English, the Cockney being the sort of classic London, classic London dialect and accent. And I guess it is it is indeed a dialect more than an accent because it does have its own linguistic characteristics. Okay, an essential worker for short. Could be an EMT, an emergency medical technician, an example of an essential worker, as we now understand that phrase. Um, and to prevent through intimidation could be to deter, I suppose. You deter somebody from doing something, you intimidate them. Although I don't know that deterrent, deterrence has to be intimidation per se. Let's check the crosses. A seahorse has a prehensile one. Uh, tail, prehensile tail. So I guess a sort of no longer strictly functional or, or it's not necessary, but it remains due to the vagaries of evolution. Big heads are egos. And to tear something up is to rend it, rend it asunder. And the contents of a JPEG file is an image. So that fits there. And a psychedelic sub substance is LSD. And here we have the abbreviated form of whatever the full unpacking of LSD is, but we don't need an indication of abbreviation because LSD is overwhelmingly how we refer to it. We don't we don't use the full, fully spelled variation almost ever. Blank year, 2020 or 2024. Well, those must be leap years, four years apart. And a canine handshake, canine handshake offerings would be their paws. They might offer you, a dog might offer you its paw to shake. The event of October 1929, the market crash. Ah, so what is, is this a theme somehow? Does railroad station and market crash somehow tie into a theme? Is there something about railroad and market? Those are both, I don't know, municipal structures or something? Not really. I don't know. We'll have to keep solving. We'll have to continue with the solve. Santa blank wins. Santa Anna wins. I remember growing up in California, 
uh, heard about the Santa Ana winds all the time, uh, a uh, weather phenomenon. And here we have a Fortune 500 company whose name rhymes appropriately with quack. Is it Aflac? Why is that appropriate? Is it appropriate because they have a duck mascot? But that's presumably they only do because their name rhymes with duck. It's not like it's a coincidence. Hmm. Maybe. Is that right? It seems sort of odd the way it's clued. A long way away is far, and a spoiler of a perfect perfect record is a loss. And tennis champ Osaka. Oh, I think I've seen this before. Naomi. I mean, that, that's the only name I could think that would fit there anyway. But uh, but let's check the crosses. Love on the Loire. So that would be in France, in French. Uh, amour. No. Amour. Uh, yeah, A-M-O-U-R. Sorry. I was thinking of, I guess, Amore in Italian. Or Spanish. Amour. Anyway. Phoenix NBA team, I think the Suns, that looks right. That looks right to me, and it sounds right to me. And a pastry with a swirl is a cinnamon bun. So what is this? Is this the theme, or is it totally irrelevant? Nothing to do with the theme. I don't know. Railroad station market crash cinnamon bun. I'm only saying that because they're the long answers, and often those end up being the theme answers but maybe not that could be completely it could be completely unrelated to the theme all right a bird symbolizing grace is a swan and if something is in the public consciousness it's known a grammy genre since 1980 1988 must be rap and skiing or skating that's an or so we're only singular it's not plural even though there are two examples either one of those is a sport you're right you could say true true you're right and to poke fun at someone is to rib that person. A listening device for an undercover officer is a wire. And if something came to a close, it ended. With haste could be rapidly. And Bryn Blank, a woman's college in the United States, Bryn Mar, which sort of looks, kind of looks like a Welsh phrase, Bryn Mar, the way it's spelled. I wonder if it is. I should look that up. Here we have... A bridge is a span. And liver and blank, liver and onions. And if only, could be I wish, if only. If only I knew what the theme to this puzzle was. <laughs> Narrowly defeat without could be to edge out. And spiritual guides could be gurus. Continental currency units, so continental Europe, um, not, not all of it, but much of it shares the euro in the Eurozone, which I think the Eurozone came up yesterday or the day before in the crossword. A terse request to a bartender. Huh. Terse request. What would a terse request to a bartender be? Don't know. Here we have a gate for a horse with a buggy. Could be a trot, a nice easy trot. And a legal wrong is a tort. You hear about tort reform sometimes. Um, it's dealing with uh, it's a, a legal reform. And Damascus is its capital, Syria. And word repeated in Roger Ebert's I blank, blank, blank this movie. I hated, I guess. I hated, hated, hated this movie. It must be based on the crosses, H and T there. Um, figure skating, figure skater Harding would be Tanya Harding, who I think a lot of us mainly remember from the controversy surrounding um, Tanya Harding and Nancy Kerrigan in the 90s. Inconclusive score, a tie. An inconclusive score in a sports match, for instance. Oh, I see. A terse request to a bartender. Another one. I see. So not necessarily terse because the patron is irritated with the bartender. Just terse because it's a it's a short, quick order. Oh, fire sale. Here we go. So here we have our revealer. And our revealer, I guess, okay, so those three, those three answers were indeed the theme answers. And now I'm going to hopefully figure out how exactly I'm supposed to interpret them in order to understand why they are related in a theme. So, fire safety technique, or 17, 29, and 49 across together. Is it stop, drop, and roll fire safety technique? I'm trying to think of three things. Oh, yeah, maybe it is. Stop, 
drop, and roll. Oh, oh, I see. <laughs> I, okay, that's yeah. It's each one of these is uh, each one of these words in stop, drop, and roll corresponds to one of the answers. So, a railroad station is a stop. A market crash is a drop of stock prices, and a cinnamon bun is a roll. It's a uh, you roll. It's a roll. You eat it. That's a baked good. Wow. Okay. So there really was, I don't think, any way. I mean, I'd be very curious to know if anyone identified that relationship before getting to the revealer. This is certainly a case where the revealer is very important. And sometimes the revealer just explains what ties the theme together and you can have identified it already or not, but the theme still makes sense without the revealer. Just the revealer helps you understand the way in which it makes sense. But in this case, the theme really only exists with the revealer, the revealer being, sorry, I shouldn't, should have mentioned the revealer being the sort of explanatory clue here that ties the rest of the theme together. And often as is predicted by Lyle's law coined by a viewer of this series, um, it tends to be located towards the bottom of the grid, generally over on the right hand side of the grid, although in this case it spans the entire puzzle. And and yes, in this case, you, you simply the theme simply wouldn't exist without the revealer. I don't think these things could be said to have it, to share anything in common without uh, without this connecting tissue of stop, drop, and roll being used to interpret their relationship. So there we go. Very clever, Tomas Spires. All right, hey, we'll finish off the puzzle. Hey, over here is pst, a little whisper. And a lead into boy or girl could be at a, at a boy or at a girl. A contraction of that's a, that's a boy, I guess, or, you know, that sort of thing. Um, they have everything from aardvark to zebras, could be zoos. And yum is like saying tasty. And what calls the kettle black in an expression? The pot calling the kettle black. Where to sit for the bar? Question mark. So wait, the question mark is a pun indicator. I don't think I don't think we've seen many of those today. That suggests that we shouldn't. If you talk about sitting for the bar, it sounds like sitting for your legal. Um, you're, you're attempting to become a lawyer. You're attempting to pass the bar exam. But in this case, because of the question mark, we're not reading it the most straightforward way. And in this case, we're reading it more literally. You're going to sit on a stool at the bar. So where baby not baby Moses was found in the Nile, I started saying Nile, uh, in the basket of reeds, I guess, in the Nile. To whirl is to spin. A sign of saintliness could be a halo in a piece of art, for instance. And if something is fresh, it's new. And then Mother Nature's blanket is snow. To go back when editing is to undo something, I guess. And... A pig's supper, or rather, not a pig's su supper, but pig's supper, plural, is slop. And ye old shop, spelled with the extra e in that old-timey sort of way. Although it's really not ye old shop. That ye would have been pronounced the. That was the. That was the. Um, we now say ye old because it. That's how we say wise, but that's um, not technically accurate to how what, what it would have been. Anyway, to ooze is to seep. And there's the Monday puzzle. So, a nice, fun, and sort of strangely baffling theme until the revealer came in. I, I, I enjoyed how completely at sea I was trying to determine what on earth connects to these, to the point that I started assuming I simply, these were not part of the theme in general, but I don't, you know, I hadn't really noticed any other common threads linking some any shorter answers together. So I just didn't know what to make of it at all. And I suppose there wasn't really much way for me to have uh, made anything of it until I saw this revealer. But again, if you had a different experience, if you somehow managed to intuit stop, drop and roll from these answers before arriving at the revealer, do let me know because that would be, I think, quite impressive. But otherwise, I think a pretty good solid Monday puzzle, not too challenging, which is uh, which is the purpose of the Monday puzzle. So um, there we have it. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you enjoyed the puzzle. I hope you solved it yourself if you took a stab at it. And I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, please do subscribe to the channel. Um, hit the subscribe button or the bell, I guess, underneath the video, and you will see 
this series as it's published each day, according to your YouTube notification preferences. And if you know somebody who would like this as well, or who you suspect might like it, pass it on either directly or um, spread it with a recommendation in your online community of choice. That would mean a lot to me if you did that. And um, like I said at the beginning of the video, I just put up another Patreon bonus solve. So if you'd like to see me solve the Christmas uh, cheer, Christmas cheer themed uh, New York Times monthly bonus puzzle constructed by Fred Piscop, that's up there on the Patreon feed, as well as the past week of mini puzzle speed solves. And again, still interested in hearing your recommendations, requests, or suggestions in terms of what you'd like to see me solve on that Patreon feed, if you are indeed a Patreon subscriber. And I suppose I did most of the, uh, most of the rest of the spiel up front today. So I can, um, I can sign off for now. I hope you'll be back tomorrow for the Tuesday, uh, the Tuesday daily solve and the Tuesday crossword should be another fairly gentle puzzle. So do come back for that. But until then, please do have an excellent remainder of your Monday. Take care.